Hi, my name is Pastor Sylvanus Harris. I am the senior pastor of the Mount A Missionary Baptist Church. I'm grateful uh, to be pastor right now. Uh, been many years uh, of, of, of pastoring, learning how to pastor and, and being under a pastor who serves greatly. My first year here at Mount A has been a wonderful year. Um, and one of the things I uh, like about this church is that it's very family oriented. Uh, so there is no disconnection. There is a strong connection around uh, this entire church. So uh, as everyone has uh, stated about their moms, dads, grandparents, you know, ancestors have uh, really uh, been uh, very instrumental in building the foundation of Mount A Mission and Baptist Church. I've come to know the history of the church started back in 1876, I'm sorry. One of the things I like about uh, this church is that it has a foundation that is solid, uh, something to build on, and something that we can make uh, uh, better for the future. This here is an historic area. Uh, this is something that, that most people uh, dream about, uh, but never actually get a chance to do. But uh, in this season, in this time, God have allowed uh, me an opportunity to pastor such a great group of people who have been instrumental to me and my family since we've been here. Hi, my name is Bernadette Douglas. Uh, Dixon and I was born February 4th 1955 of course my family was already here uh, my great grandfather uh, died in the old church and was was buried his sons which my uh, cousin Ella was just talking about her father and his both of his sons, junior and senior, were out uh, doing, riding the woods, as they called it. They, they were in the turpentine business and they were out chipping boxes. Well, he died on a Sunday in church and they just laid him out on the cooling board, as they called it, and they buried him the next morning and his sons didn't even know he was dead. Uh, my father relayed a lot of of uh, you know the family history about the uh, industry and stuff. The according to Daddy, the land was uh, donated for the building of, of a church and cemetery for the community by a man named John Carter. And um, I became a member of the church in the early 1960s and was baptized out in the yard out there in a, in a pool. And I can remember there being frogs in the pool and I was scared. <laughs> and, uh, after, uh, after baptism, we had to come back inside the church and sit on the front seat. And then after church was over, we received what was called the right hand of fellowship. I know my little hands were very small and it seemed like all those big people were just squeezing it, but uh, it, it made a difference. Uh, my connection with the church has made a difference in my life. Uh, my great aunt, Melvina Douglas, uh, as, as she was telling you, uh, our parents, four parents were very strict. Uh, I started teaching Sunday school as soon as I learned how to read. And, and um, so I stayed a member here at Mount 8 for more than half of my life. And then of course I, I grew up, I got married, I, I left the church for a while and went to another church and recently came back home. My father was a, a cook, as they call it, and he learned to cook at the Malbis restaurant under Greek chef Kamanaka, and he, he would always refer to him as his first teacher uh, in the cooking industry. Uh, this place around here used to be fields and 
of course everything is building up into houses now, but it used to be fields. And we walked from Spanish Fort over here to church and either my father or one of my brothers carried me on their neck. We had to cross the log to come across the, uh, what we call the big branch. And then we had to come up the hill. And at that time, like they said, there was no air conditioning or anything, but the windows of the church were open. And we, if we were running late, we could hear them singing before we got here. And we were always excited to be here. We come in and, and uh, like she said, Uncle Senior was over to Sunday school. And once Sunday school was over, we had just a little bit of break before we came back in for the 11 o'clock service. Our pastor's name at the time when I joined the church was Reverend Collier. And uh, then after that came, uh, you know, many others. At one point in time, uh, my uncle Lester, who was my father's brother, he was the pastor. My daddy, James Zirin Douglas, was the chairman of the trustee board. And my uncle Jimmy, Jim Douglas, was the chairman of the deacon board. Uh, that was just for a couple of years. We had many active families in this church. The, the active families was we had the, the Carols, the Jenkins, uh, all of those older people were very important in our lives. And they, they taught us, you know, the right way to live. Uh, everybody at that time worked somewhere. They either worked um, in, as domestics in the home or I had a couple of aunts that were school teachers. I think uh, Ella mentioned and Letha, um, but we lived well, and it was because of the church. I remember uh, Sister Knight and, and uh, the others in the kitchen. They would cook for us for vacation Bible school. Uh, we were excited to have hot dogs, sometimes popsicles. It was, it was just a, a fun time for us. Uh, when this church was built, I was little, but I, can, I remember that we marched in the church. We marched from the old church up there, came down here and marched in the church. My grandmother had planted a tree out there in the cemetery. She pulled it up on the way to church one Sunday morning and she planted it and she told my daddy, she said, when this tree gets tall enough to shade my grave, I'm gonna die. And she said, but the church won't be where it is now. She, she, she told him, she said, he said, she said, it's gonna be a big white church and it'll be facing the highway. Apparently she had had this dream. And the first funeral held in this church facing the highway was hers that uh, in November of 1963. Hello, my name is Ella. Douglas Glenn, and I'm a member of Mount A Baptist Church, and I'm a choir member. And my mother and father has deceased. My father was the superintendent of the Sunday school. My mother was a choir director. And we lived not too far from the church, but we were in walking distance. We had to walk through the woods to church over a branch and up the hill. <laughs> we had one building. This is where our school was from first grade through sixth. And after we left school, I don't remember all of the teacher's name. I think one of them was named Letha Douglas, a cousin of mine. And this church is actually mostly family when it was a new church, it was mostly family, and the, and the Jenkins were here also, but they lived in Loxley, and we had a good time. We played outside in the dirt. We didn't have fans, we didn't have air conditioners, and when it rained, we had to go inside. However, we had a good time. As children, we played together. 
ate together and worked together. After that, after we finished school, after I finished school in Daphne, I left. And the church never stopped, because when I came back, after we retired from service, I came back, the church is still here. Uh, however, this is a new church. We went to the old church in my childhood. What I can remember about the church, when I was 11 years old, I joined this church and I was an active member up until this day. I started preaching in 1975. I taught Sunday school here at this church. I was the second vice president of the trustee board of this Mount Baptist Church. I was able to, they had the church up for sale and I bought the church and built my house out of it. And uh, the people that helped me to tear it down was famous Douglas, Jeff Quinney, Paul Douglas, and myself. I remember when we had to go down to the spring to get water and bring it to the church. And uh, they had two toilets, for the one for the men and one for the ladies that was out back, way out, had to walk pretty good ways to the bathrooms. And I remember when we had to baptize, I remember five different places we baptized. One was down at the foot of the hill, one was over there on her on Turkey Branch. We baptized across the woods from Mount Eight Baptist Church. I remember once we went up there to Mac Brumley and we baptized. And uh, I remember the old church had a bell there and we was going to school at the Turkey Branch School and they would always tell us to not get under the bell because it could fall. And occasionally that bell would fall through the week and never fell on Sundays. And we'd come out there on Sunday morning, sometimes the bell would be going through the floor and they would take that bell out of the ground later on and put it back up in the uh, steeple of the church. I remember when they put the addition to the church, I was about the third grade in high school, a man by the name of Luke, Luke Lucius added that uh, bell to the church. I remember back when uh, we used to bury the grave had to be six foot six, six foot deep, six foot wide. And they would let the bury, put the grave, uh, cast it down in there, and they had a shovel. And uh, they would take, the men would take the shovel and fill that grave back up. And uh, they would do it in a hurry. And men would rotate, if, uh, the youth would bury, they have funerals on a Sunday then. And the men would pull off their sh coat and rotate with that shovel until that grave was filled up and heaped over the top with dirt. The next thing I remember about this church that my daddy was a, a deacon of this church. He was also the trustee of this church for about 20 some years or longer. The next thing I can remember about the church that when we were children, Miss uh, Melvina Douglas was the primary teacher and she taught the uh, Sunday school and she would teach us what thus said the Lord. And after that, we remember that Miss Stallworth, she was the uh, musician, as I can remember, the first one that played for our church. My name is Shirley Ann Carol Scott. And uh, I was born and raised at my early years in Baldwin County. And uh, my mother and, and my father were uh, with us and whatnot, but then things happened and uh, they were separated a little bit. And so we ended up, my brother and I, one of my brothers, and we came back here and came to Baldwin County, stayed with my grandmother. And she had 13 grandchildren in the house. And we lived up on Highway 31 
my brother and I walked from up on Highway 31 to the school that was over there. And even the interstate that you see the car ripping and running there was not there. But we would do that, walk through the woods. And uh, then things turned and uh, my mother got sick and she had to go to uh, Marian Mariana, Florida, I think it was, to go to a sanitarium. So I had to come back here again and stay with my grandmother. And I was there going to school until I graduated. And I was blessed to be able to go to college, in Alabama State in Montgomery. And uh, I finished the course there and I came out and I was, um, then I went to college and I became, a, got a teacher's certification. And as I would go, go and do, and I learned how to do so much in reference to the children. And I would help, try to help them all I could. And I was a member of this church and Eventually, I would work with the choir, I'm secretary, and several other activities that were going on in the church. And uh, after my mother passed, it kind of stunned me because as I, want, I wanted to grow up and do so I could do for her, and she wasn't here. My name is Samuel Jenkins, Jr. <clears throat> I'm a trustee and a deacon here at the Mount A Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, I'm a third generation um, being a member of this church. My grandfather was one of the people that um, helped purchase the, the area and build the first church that was here. And my grandmother is, the I, I never knew my grandfather, but I knew my grandmother. Her name was uh, uh, A.T. Jenkins, Amelia T. Jenkins. Uh, she was very instrumental while I was growing up as a young, young fellow. Uh, the past that, that I can remember as far back as I can go is uh, Reverend Collier, and he was the one that baptized me um, in that swimming pool. And just like uh, Minister Douglas said, it was uh, tadpoles and frogs in that pool where we got baptized in. Uh, I'm 65 years old. I was born January 5th, 1955. And I've been here all of my life, went off to college to Alabama State University and returned. And I served on the Usher board. Uh, I've been taught by um, Reverend Longmire. Uh, I've been taught in school by uh, Sister Scott. Uh, so our church history really is something else. My grandmother would line us up, all of the young men in the church uh, she would line them up. She would sit on the second row in the church and she would line the, the, the young men up. Uh, well, I'm talking about, I say young men, but I'm talking about uh, eight, nine, ten years old on that front row of the, the pew. And <clears throat> you have to sit there and listen at the preacher. And if you turned your head to look over at the other one, I started to talk. My grandmother could thump you so hard upside your head, it would bring tears to your eyes. And everybody knew that. So we'd sit there and just be attentive and, and listen at what to preach. A lot of times we'd fall asleep. But at the end of the sermon, she would always ask each one of us, tell me something the preacher said. 
So you had to pay attention for a little while so you could get a, a sentence or something to tell her because she wasn't going to be pleased if you didn't have anything to tell her about what the preacher said. These people were strict disciplinarians. They wanted you to do what was right and they didn't tell you anything wrong. Uh, they were leaders and they wanted you to be leaders. And to this day, I know of none that have gone off to prison that came up in this church. I know of none. Hi, this is Johnny Hall. I want to let you know something about the Mount A. Baptist Church. The Mount A. Baptist Church is in a very surprising area, but a very good area. I learned about the church when I was very young. When I was born, my aunt was there to see me when I was born. And she was so surprised to see me. She and her boyfriend took me and carried me about four miles one Sunday morning to have me pray for. And my godmother have been real close to me ever since. My mother kept me close. My daddy kept me close. I grew up and one day I wanted to come to come to the Mount A Baptist Church. And I got up that morning, I felt so good, I wanted to go to church. But one thing I'd like to say at this time, the last pastor that was in this church before Reverend Harris came and took over, his name was Reverend Collins, Reverend George Collins. He lived in the, in the Brimley area. Reverend Collins would come in and he, he'd give his service on a Sunday. He'd be serviced to the community. He would visit the sick. We would take trips. He was a fine man. So much so until he saw to it that he wanted me to do some I'll say household chores for him sometime. <laughs> so he came to the place where he wanted to call me every time something went wrong in his house. So much so that I became just like a servant to him. And I was always close to him all through the community. And whenever we went, wherever we went, Wherever we go, whatever I had to do, but we became so close until he started inviting me to his house to do the repairs around his house. I did that for years and years. Whatever it was, or whatever he wanted me to do because he knew I was very instrumental in that type of work because I did it all my life. So I ended up doing various shows for Reverend Collins and it ended up, we got to the place where we became to be associates with quite a few members of his church in his own community, which was his relatives. I got a chance to deal with his whole family. His wife, his mom, his children, and a lot of his friends. I'd go into the area whenever they wanted me. And I would do what I could to make things happy. And that's where we come from today. Reverend Collins was a great man. 
He did a great job in the church. We loved him. But now we have a new pastor, Reverend Harris, which is a fine man. From day one, he has been joy, a joy ever since we've been here. And we hope everybody that have ever visited this church, through Reverend Harris, who, who is our pastor now, or any other minister that have ever come to the Mount A. Baptist Church or any other congregation that had ever visited our church. We hope that you can say like we can say today. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Hi, my name is Verdine Boyd Hollings. I was born March 28, 1945. I was raised and out at Mount Aid. Uh, my parents were here, D.C. and Aline Boyd. Uh, it was eight of us. All the children were raised and born out here, right out here. And we all were baptized. I was baptized about when I was eight years old under Reverend Lester Douglas. Uh, they had a pool out back. I was baptized out there. My sisters, uh, the older ones, was baptized in a creek down the street on CC, they called it the CC Road. And then several of them was baptized down the hill right there. It was a creek down there that they were baptized in. Uh, we walked to church every Sunday morning. I lived between Highway 31 and 90, and my sisters and I and uh, James Zetta Quinney and Marjorie Hall, Lena Mae Quinney, and Jeff, all of us would walk all the way from uh, 31, they'd come across 31 down to 90, and we'd walk all the way up Highway 90 to church every Sunday morning, time for Sunday school. Uh, it was also a Martha and Sis. They, they were the, the Douglases. We lived all in the same neighborhood. But we'd walk out here every Sunday morning. And a lot of times we'd be coming uh, to church. We could hear Uncle Rita. That was James Zetter and Marjorie's daddy. Uh, he, we could hear Uncle Rita singing, I'm going through before we get here. And we'd be running trying to hear Uncle Rita sing. Uh, it was awesome that uh, my grandfather also, he was out here. Uh, Rep, uh, Frank Austin, uh, uh, also oh, Uncle Rita and them, they rode horses every morning. They'd have, on Sunday morning, they'd have that wagon. And sometimes we'd get on the wagon with them and uh, ride out here to church. But most of the time we walked. I can remember when it was right up there, the old church. That's why we'd be running, try to, because it was a, it was like a, a little trail that came up that hill, all the way through here, and we'd walk up to the older church. That's why we attended church up until this one was built. And Mr. Ishman Carroll, he also, he was a deacon out here, and uh, he would ride his horse on Sunday mornings. Every Sunday morning, he had a great big white horse that uh, he had on that wagon and he'd ride it to church every Sunday morning. It was the Douglases, the Austins, the Carrolls, uh, Jenkins, the Boyds, uh, Jerkins, Mr. John Jerkin. Uh, he had a daughter who, uh, La Rose Jerkin, she was a musician here at one time. William Cyprian Sr. As I said before, I'm currently the chairman of the deacon's ministry here. Now, I can't really tell you about any history, but I can tell you, uh, you know, about the time that uh, I, when I first got here, which was in 1990, I believe. Uh, my wife is originally from this area, from Loxley, Alabama, and uh, we arrived here uh, I believe it was in 1990. 
uh, January of 1990. We came from uh, California, Victorville, California, where we were uh, stationed there in, in the Air Force. I retired out there, and two years later, my wife retired. And so uh, her father is from this area, and I think her father kind of talked her into coming back here because uh, I, I had my sights on Florida. But we ended up here, and uh, we joined the church. Her father talked to us quite a bit about, you know, the, uh, how good this church was and the people in the church, good people. And uh, we've always been in church during the time that we were uh, in the Air Force. We, uh, we stayed in church, never, never got out of the church. We uh, participated in the chapel ministry while we were uh, in, in the Air Force. When we retired, we came home. And uh, again, uh, as I said, we talked to her dad. And her dad talked us into joining this church. And I think that was in 1991. Year after that, uh, uh, I became the uh, chairman of the deacon's ministry. Remained chairman for, uh, I think, about 10, 10 and a half years. Took a break, then another individual became uh, chairman. And uh, he left and uh, went to uh, Florida, South Florida. At that time, the, uh, the brethren voted me back in as chairman of the deacon's ministry. And I'm in that position now, and uh, I've enjoyed it very much. I, I like working with people, but I'm very concerned about uh, folks working together and, and getting the job done. Very concerned about that, and that's what we have here now. We have a, a people that uh, uh, works together, and, and that's, that's what I strive for every day. Uh, working together. We, uh, you know, you can get more accomplished when you work together. And that's very important to me. And we have a, a good bunch of uh, folks here at the church and uh, that's what we strive for. But what I will say, you know, I've, I've enjoyed the time that uh, we've, we've been here. You, you won't find any, any, any people any better than the folks that are here in, in this church. And I do believe that's, that's why the Lord sent us here instead of Florida. Senior Douglas was a father for 13 children. And I'm right in the middle of them. But we all were members of this church. And he was so strict when we were younger he could look at you. If you were out of place, you jump back in place. He was just that strict. And my mother used to tell him all the time, you're too strict on those girls. He said, they are mine. They are my girls. I want to raise them right. And he did out of the 13. And when he got ready on Sunday morning, he would lead the way and he made everybody get up and have breakfast around the table, but he prayed so long, the food got cold. <laughs> but we still had to eat it before we left to come to Sunday school. And we stayed at church all day, Sunday school, 11 o'clock service, BTU service, and I don't know what else. But uh, we had a lot of fun. He, he, raised us, he raised us right out of the 13. I don't know if any of us has ever been in jail. I was born uh, July 12th, 1933, and I was raised here <clears throat> in Baldwin County and the creek down here where we were baptized. Some of us were baptized and in the creek, we didn't have a pool to be baptized in. Snakes were there. We had to, when they put us in the water, we still looking for the snakes on each side. <laughs> Because everybody, and we were raised in the country, but I'm still afraid of a snake. That's the only thing I think I'm afraid of. And if I see it first, he's a dead one. <laughs> I don't play around with snakes. But anyway, we had a good time.
Uh, in later years, I think they was afraid that the front cemetery, the cemetery, which was behind the church in the beginning, and now it's on the side of the church, that it was going to fill up. So they started another cemetery for non-members of the church who were members of the community in the back. And that's why we have the two cemeteries. They're all this, we are all part of the same families, but just some people that are not members of the church, then they are buried back there, which I think is the prettiest place because it's got the most trees, but that's the reason. <laughs> Choir rehearsal. <laughs> that was that was another thing. Uh, Thursday evening was choir rehearsal. We everybody got off the school bus out there and came into the came to the church, and we had a lady named it Sister Viola Autry. She had a big long wood panel station wagon, and she piled all of us in that station wagon to take us home. She also, when we had to go somewhere to sing, she had the entire choir in her station wagon. And she took us to uh, different churches and, and, uh, and, and we would get up and sing. We also went to WGOK over in Mobile uh, on Saturday mornings and sang on the radio. And uh, the first pastor I remember was Reverend uh, Scott from Admo. And the latest pastor we have now is Reverend Savannah Harris. So I can put remember from then up to now, to now all the pastors. And we can say this that uh, Deacon Hayat Jenkins, he was the chairman of the trust of the deacon board. And I never seen a man that the people admired as he was admired. He was, uh, they really respected him as well as he was the pastor. Whatever he said, there was no question. He just said it. I remember one time we was out here digging up the stumps out here at the church. I was operating a backhoe, and one of Deacon Carroll was somehow they know they got in the way, and I took the backhoe and switched it around real fast, and that bucket hit Deacon Carroll, and he fell to his knees. Blood came out of his eyes, nose, mouth, and I just knew he was dead. But by the grace of God, he went to the hospital, stayed about a week, and uh, he survived and he lived years after then. I remember also when I was a little boy, you could count the cars on one finger that was here at this church. People came on, men came on horsebacks, some people came on wagons. And uh, the next thing I can remember about this church, when I was tearing the church down, there was an accident right down this, uh, at the highway we came to the church, and a man was killed. Uh, the next thing <clears throat> I can remember about this church that I uh, used to teach Sunday school right here in this side here, teach uh, the young men. And I also sang the choir. I was uh, uh, a Sunday school teacher. I think I'm repeating myself here in this church. And some of the young men I taught were Brother Sammy Jenkins and Brother Shelley Jenkins. And, uh, uh, I say Shelley Jenkins, uh, his, his son. And uh, the Lord had blessed me from then until now. I've been preaching for 45 years. And I remember Sister Scott, she was the uh, secretary, one that, that one that made out the license and signed my name on the uh, 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 credentials. And now it has almost faded out down through the years. And I can say that uh, my father was the one that picked this spot for this church to be built. Reverend J.C. Collier was the one from Pensacola, the one that uh, built this church. And I think uh, uh, Brother Wheaton was the contractor that added on to this church. And uh, I remember, I think 1944, was the first member of our family that was buried here. His name was Edward Longmire. And then later years, my mother passed, and then my father passed, and that's all we had buried in this church. So we've been blessed when it comes to the death of the immediate family of the Long Miles. And then we got about the shortest list of the people being buried here. And I just give the Lord the glory and the praise for the many blessings that He had blessed me. 
as I said earlier, we always walk to church, but now the Lord has blessed us that we able to ride here. We got air conditioning, we got uh, carpet on the floor, we got uh, padded pews, and we have really been blessed from the time that I've been here up until this day. I never thought that I would see the church progress the way it has progressed down through the years from walking till now we're able to ride and we're able to just sit back and enjoy how the Lord has blessed us with the facilities that's here that's in our church. Well, as I said, we, we, my brother and I walked and, and some of us, the same thing happened when we had to come to church. But there was a, a pool, a, when it's not, it wasn't really a pool, but pool, but it was a water. Um, and that's where they, they were baptized. And um, I think it was down this way, that way somewhere. And um, the, this, the church was facing this way at one time, and then it, then it turned up and went the other way. So, but everything was still uh, dedicated to doing what was right. And we enjoyed coming, and we had the youth, young, young folk singing in the choir. And um, then as we grew up, we took part with the other churches activities that were going on. So we are just thankful that we had the avenue to walk on where we could do those things for ourselves. My dad was a very dedicated man to this church. Um, he was on the usher board and also uh, chairman of the trustee board for a long time. and. I have that position now, just recently uh, been in that position. Um, and I got some big shoes to fill. Uh, my dad was the first uh, black, the only black county commissioner that we have had in this county of Baldwin County. And he's got a highway that's named after him that runs right in front of this church. Um, he was very dedicated to his church, and my mother was also. Uh, she sang in the choir and everything. And um, I, all of my brothers grew up here. Uh, my mother had five boys. Uh, two of them are deceased and three are still living. All of the descendants that were, all of my dad's brothers, siblings, and everybody have passed on. The last one passed on. Uh, earlier this month. So that was the last one. My granddad had five boys and three girls. Um, all of them were very, very successful and pillars wherever they went within the world. They were stationed all over the world. And they constantly would send donations back to the church whenever we had special drives. Um, Ever since I've been here, this church has always been financially stable. A minister has never left here without being compensated. Uh, we've always, matter of fact, we paid our bills on time. And this church, when it was, we always paid it off, bills off before they matured. Um, and from what I can remember, I was, well, I was told that that used to be where we've got the uh, fellowship hall was a school and uh, the church had donated it to the state to be a school and my grandmother taught at that school. Uh, so my family has got a long history of being here at this church. The, the windows were open at the old church and uh, there was a lot of church going on in there. People used to get, ladies and men used to get happy in church when the preacher would say something that touched their hearts and ushers would have to come and sit them down and fan them to, to get them back calm. Uh, they, it, I think it was a, a, a way of relief 
from the pressures that that person had gone through that week and then to be able to let it out and then be charged up by the minister and move on for another for another week. It was it was oppressed and we were but we kept moving on. Our ancestors did my grandmothers, my dad. And we didn't even know that we were really being treated not equal because of the love and the care that they showed us. I mean, we thought we were, well, we knew we were cared for. But after I joined the church, I was baptized, and the way I was baptized was not in a baptism pool. The church took us down to the river with a little nice stream of running water, and that's where I was baptized. Uh, our church Eventually, we had a big stone, and I don't know what happened, but the big bell fell through the steeple and damaged the church. So after the end, the people began to look for another area to put another church up. So they kept on till they started this church. And if I go back a little bit and to bring you up to date on how this church started, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> we had a pastor and his wife out of Pensacola. His name was Reverend George Collins. He was a very smart man. He did a lot of preaching for this for our church. And I didn't know he was a bricklayer. I didn't know he was a blocklayer. But one day, they, they found a new area, which is the area in which we are in now, to build a new church. Relman Collins, was the block layer. He laid every block, him and his friends laid every block in this church. They built it. They finished it. We moved in. And then we began to see a little bit further. <laughs> yes, he was talking about picnics, dinners, or whatever you want to name, we would have that sometime after church service. So this church that we're living in now has been very tremendously appreciated for this community in which we live now. This church has came a long ways. The time that I've been here, I've been able to see many ministers come and leave and, and then we get another minister, we get another minister until this day have come. This church, as I grew up in this church, I was very instrumental. I always wanted to be appreciated in whatever situation I was in. So this church being the church that it was and people 
elderly people of this area realized that they saw a little potential in me as to what I could do in cognitive work and so forth. Many times I found myself in this church working. I never shall forget the poor pit. One day, we was trying to improve the situation. And they wanted me to improve the poor pit area. So I came in and I began to work on the floor first. And something happened to me that day that I will never forget. I was using some very expensive stain in the poor pit area. And I'll, I don't ever like to use the term devil, but sometimes you can't help but say it. I was in the poor pit, I was working, and all of a sudden, it's a good thing I had my drop cloth. I had my drop cloth down and everything over the poor pit, and I was working, and all of a sudden, that stain that I had using on that poor pit tried to turn over on that flow. And when it did, I caught it. <laughs> and I was so pleased when I caught that varnish to keep it from staining the area on that poor pit. Then we got a pool. And the pool decided that, they decided that they wanted the pool area uh, redone I said they wanted me to do it I said yes sir I'll do it so I went into the pool area I stripped the pool area I varnished the walls and I repainted the pool area later on we got we had an area in the back, but we didn't have an upstairs. We always wanted an upstairs. We had a flat roof on the back. We always wanted an upstairs. So they asked me if I could look into the situation in order that we could have upstairs. I said, yes, I will. I went in and I looked and I drew them out a plan as to how they could put it upstairs. So they appreciated the plan that I presented to them and they went to work on it. And we had a nice upstairs apartment that we can have all the youngsters to be in Sunday school doing church service. I want to say that we, we have nine and a half acres. Uh, it was acquired back in, uh, like I said, 18, uh, 76 when the church was first built. Uh, the, the first building was actually built, I want to say like maybe over on the, uh, I guess going toward the east side of the land of the property or uh, where the cemetery is uh, now in the front. Uh, at the latter part of the years they built uh, where we're sitting at now. And, and the next building after that was uh, remodeled and built 
in that same place. Uh, but I, I want to, and I'm just speaking for future reference of the church because people need to know where we're headed uh, in this season. You know, we want to, uh, this here is in a historic landmark and we want to be able to uh, show people uh, of all of all cultures. It's not just uh, a black or white or Hispanic thing or, or, or any of that nature. It is, uh, uh, it is for everybody to see the history of where we come from. But don't just linger on the history. We got to learn to build upon it. And so that's what we're doing, we're building upon it. And uh, uh, we had some real good people who was very instrumental in us uh, being here. Uh, but going forward, we have uh, uh, future plans that are going to be taking place. Uh, I'm praying God's blessings upon everything that we undertake to do. And it's for the kingdom of God.